Indonesia is the biggest island state of the world. Amongst its thousands of islands, Bali is its most famous one. Also called the Island of Gods, Bali is home to Indonesia's Hindu minority with a population of over 4 million people. Its landscape is characterized by Hindu temples, extensive terraced rice fields, and unique ecosystem of dense jungle, volcanic cones, and mangroves. Balinese have developed sophisticated art forms, especially sculpture, wood carving, and one of the most vibrant performing arts cultures in the world, with thousands of temple festivals, ceremonies, and public shows. The island's beauty and vibrant cultural life attracts millions of visitors every year. Bali's volcanic nature has contributed to its exceptional fertility. Its tall mountain ranges and climate provide plentiful rainfall that supports a highly productive agricultural sector, which is the island's biggest employer. These religious, geographical and environmental features have led to the creation of a unique system called Subak. For over thousands of years, the Subak system of cooperative and democratic resource management has shaped the cultural landscape and made the Balinese the most productive rice growers in Indonesia. It has attracted interest by ethnographers, anthropologists and sociologists for several decades as unique form of sustainable and democratic resource management on the scale of whole watersheds. Balinese provincial legislation has recognized the Subak as customary law societies with an agrarian religious nature which were established a long time ago and evolved continuously as landholding organizations which distribute water in a defined irrigation area. Subak reflects the Trihata Karana philosophy which means the three causes for prosperity. Balinese believe that well-being is only possible if people are in harmony with realms of the spirit, nature and among people themselves. This practice and belief finds its manifestation in regular offerings and temple ceremonies that play an active role in the collective water management and everyday life of many Balinese. Balinese believe that gods live in the mountains, whereas demons live in the sea. The human world is in between and needs to balance both other realms. Fresh water from the mountains is considered holy and rice is considered a gift of the gods. Rice is the highest yielding of all cereals, has a high starch content and is also, for religious reasons, the main food of the Balinese. Ritual ceremonies are closely related to the growth stages of rice cultivation. There are both individual and group level rituals which are performed in order to pray for a good crop growing, protection against pests and a gratitude for good harvest. Aivaya and Pine's ancestors have been Subak farmers for many generations. As a farmer, he has extensive knowledge about Subak. Subak is the system, system of the irrigation. On the organizational level, small-scale farmers are democratically organized to decide about farming practices, crops, and distribution of water irrigation. All Subak members have equal rights regardless of caste or size of landholding. The Subak forms part of a complex system of mountains, forests and springs from where water is channeled via canals and tunnels into temples and from there water is cooperatively distributed into the terraced rice fields. Inside this system, water temples play a central role in the cooperative management of water resource by several Subaks. The complex Subak irrigation system can be subdivided into four technical components. A main structure that diverts water from a river or a spring. 
a main canal that transports irrigation water from the upstream main structure to the rice fields downstream. Irrigation canals that distribute irrigation water into rice fields and on-farm drainage facilities that distribute both inflow and outflow of water. The irrigation facilities are originally constructed with simple, locally available materials such as wood and stone. Inside a subak, internal systems operate in order to control and measure water distribution, maintain the water infrastructure in order to prevent losses, organize the method of making mountainous land into terraced rice fields, and regulate the planting system. If sufficient water is available, all subak areas plant paddy. If not, a planting rotation between rice and horticultural plants is established in order to rotate water use with surrounding subaks. Uh, they have meeting, what kind you should grow uh, in the area of members of the subak. If they, uh, one time example, they won't grow like a uh, peanut, all they grow peanut. The ecology of rice terraces of the size of whole watersheds is managed by a network of up to 100 subaks and water temples that enable sufficient rice production to sustain a dense population on the volcanic island. A natural pest control is enabled as all members agree on a common crop to cultivate and coordinate the harvesting and flooding of the fields. In the rice harvest, they harvest together. When they start already harvest, uh, they make me think, okay, uh, this is uh, the rice ready to harvest. And before harvest, they have a, uh, they make a ceremony like uh, in the small Srina. And also a ceremony in temple, they call it Subak temple, it's more bigger temple. In this self-organized and horizontal way, life cycles of pests and plant diseases are reduced without the use of pesticides. The Subak also allows to establish an intercropping system with other crops. Every subak has formal and informal rules called avig avig that regulate the rights and duties of subak members in terms of land and water use as well as collective religious ceremonies. It establishes the obligations and rights as well as punishments for violations of its members. Farmers can be active members who take part in all activities or inactive members who don't directly participate can exchange their obligations for money. Priests and heads of customary villages can be special members of a subak. Subak members organize in a general assembly as the forum for democratic and open decision making in order to achieve consensus on matters of interest for all subak members. From among the members, a head called Pakase is elected. The Pakase is responsible for the allocation of irrigation water under the Subak members according to the size of their rice fields, convening of the meetings, overseeing work on irrigation systems and at ceremonies, dissemination of government decrees, registration of members and their land, dispute settlement and the promotion of cooperation. The term of office is usually one to five years and is voluntary. Dry season is not enough water. That is function of a case. Example, when not enough water, example, the land like this many, many hectares, they make a, this uh, man example, the water they bring this side only. When this is already grow food, and then the other man, they, the water they bring this side only. This, a person they have enough water and also this side of rice field they have enough water. It is estimated that Bali has nowadays still 1200 subaks in which 50 to 400 farmers commonly manage water irrigation for their rice fields where mostly native Balinese rice varieties are cultivated without the use of pesticides and fertilizers. A bottom-up resource management and control produces better harvests for all members compared to a centralized management approach. Its strength lies in its autonomy and flexibility to adopt to constantly changing environmental and social conditions that is undermined by formalized arrangements called Subak Gede. Attempts for more centralized institutions and government intervention have created conflicts and provoked resistance inside the Subak system. In 2012, five Subak sites 
and almost 20,000 hectares of cultural landscape were recognized as UNESCO World Heritage, which meant an important step for its recognition and conservation. The fragile subic system is threatened for its complexity and interconnectedness by new agricultural practices and increasing tourism on the island. In recent years, tourism has become the largest single industry in terms of income and has made Bali one of the richest provinces of Indonesia. As in ancient times, the question to which user sectors and from which sources water is allocated remains a highly political question of power structures. Since 2008, a memorandum of understanding between the government and the regencies of Bali aims at the conservation and spatial planning for the five World Heritage Sites. Also surrounding forest ecosystems are protected to shield rice terraces against large-scale tourism development projects. Outside the World Heritage Site, however, the progressive destruction and disintegration of the subak system can be observed, especially in the south of the island, where rice fields have almost completely been replaced by large-scale infrastructure for tourism. In 2005, it was estimated that 85% of the US $1.63 billion investment in the tourism industry is controlled by investors from outside Bali and concerns were raised that Bali would be left behind with environmental consequences, whereas profits would be offshored. It is estimated that the over-exploitation by the tourist industry has caused 200 out of 400 rivers to dry up. As a consequence of increasing tourism numbers, the southern part of Bali might face a massive water shortage by 2015. Especially the creation of tourist infrastructure for over 3 million annual visits pressures the rice fields as rising property prices, better paid jobs in the tourist industry and increasing living costs provide a strong incentive for farmers to sell their land. As one farmer decides to lucratively sell land, the water flow regime is interrupted and the tax on the neighboring lands increased. This development increasingly challenges traditional socio-environmental structures and the cultural integrity of Bali. Uh, like in the city, uh, now getting less and less, but, yeah, but uh, in the village now, uh, the members, they, they try to protect. Policy proposals urge to convert the freehold land tenure system to limited leases of 20 to 30 years after which land has to be returned to its local owners. Since the 1980s, urbanization, fragmentation of paddy fields, soil sealing and land conversion for non-agricultural uses have exacerbated the situation. The Balinese subic system is an interesting example of how a bottom-up system of irrigation management can function in the absence of strong hierarchical and centralized control. However, a completely free and equal access to water resources has never existed in Bali, as the state or kings in pre-colonial times also acted out of self-interest in managing the allocation of water resources. The financialized agro-industrial food system has proven in the last decades that it is unable to feed the world's population as it exacerbates inequalities in power relations, land ownership, democratic participation, environmental destruction and the loss of biodiversity. The heritage of the Balinese subic system provides a vibrant counterexample of a diverse, ecologically sustainable, economically productive and democratic water management system that relies on ancient red rice and is also characterized by its non-reliance on fossil fuel derivatives or heavy machinery. Ultimately, only small-scale, genetically diverse, democratic and decentralized food systems that emphasize local production Finance and consumption will ensure food sovereignty for the majority of the world population in the 21st century.